Welcome back. We've been discussing this path-breaking book by Dr. Subramanian and Dr. Vaidyanathan, both K.V. Subramanian and K.V. Vaidyanathan, called Money, the Zero-Sum Game, which is demolishing a lot of wrong understanding of monetary economics and monetary policy that, uh, uh, you know, both economists and uh, observers uh, belabor under. Uh, I've been speaking with Dr. Subramanian, one of the part authors, one of the authors of this book. Uh, I guess yeah, all of you are familiar, former chief economic advisor. Okay, Dr. Subramanian, you know, uh, a lot of reserves are created by the banks. As you know, uh, you know, during COVID and during the global financial crisis, the uh, central banks created these reserves and people often, even journalists, ask why are these reserves not lent by the banks as loans? Can you tell us why the two are related or not related? Um. Yeah, Lata, I think it's useful to just for me explain um, the three kinds of money uh, that is there in any economy, just so that our viewers understand. One is currency, as we talked about. That is an IOU from the central bank to the public. Um, second is deposits. That is basically an IOU from the commercial banks to the public, um, also corporates. Um, and, and third is what is called reserves. These are basically deposits, eff effectively deposits that banks keep with the central bank. So it is actually, you know, an IOU from the central bank to the banks. Now, the notion that actually has prevailed and has led to a lot of unconventional monetary policy, especially after the global financial crisis, is that, you know, increasing the reserves in the banking system can actually enhance lending, the bank, le the lending by the banks. And what we point out in the book that that is actually not quite right, um, you know, both conceptually and uh, with evidence. And that is something that is uh, that trend runs through everywhere. Yeah. We actually all, you know, predictions, we, we conceptually argue it and then provide very, very careful evidence uh, for it as well. So let's understand conceptually. Now, this notion that, you know, reserves can actually substitute for loans should not depend on the number of, of banks in an economy, right? Um, so just to understand, let's take the situation where suppose there are only two banks. For example, let's say I bank with uh, State Bank of India and you bank with ICICI Bank. Um, now, I basically approach ICICI Bank for a loan of one lakh. What does ICICI Bank do? It basically gives me that one lakh loan credits it you know to my to my to my account and thereby deposit my deposit goes up by one lakh i write a check to you actually and you know uh, uh, address it to lata venkatesh and you go and deposit it in the state bank of india now when the reserve bank basically nets out what does it do it basically will decrease the reserves of icici increase the res uh, decrease the reserves of sbi and increase the reserves of of ICICI because you are the one who's a recipient of that money. That's now, this basically creates the optical illusion because when you look at SBI, what has happened? You know, I've gotten a loan, so SBI has given a loan of one lakh, but reserves have basically come down by one lakh, you know, and that creates this optical il illusion. How do we understand that? Let's look at the situation where suppose there is only one bank in the economy, just State Bank of India, right? Uh, now, in this case, after having got that one lakh loan, if I write a check to you, you also have a bank account only with, with State Bank of India. That is just, I've just passed a parcel, you know, from, from, from me to you. You know, State Bank of India does not have to go to the Reserve Bank to actually settle this. In this case, there is actually no change in reserves at all. I think that clearly illustrates how the, the notion that reserves actually, you know, uh, uh, substitute or, you know, can create bank loans is an optical illusion. Uh, when, when you start thinking deeply about it, you know, it basically uh, is, is not correct. Now, look at the evidence. Uh, if you look at the you know, global financial crisis, the reserves in the United States, for instance, you know, increased from $15 million in December 2007 to about $2.5 billion in December 2013. So this is over a six-year period. The reserves increased 170 times, 170 times. Now, you know, what, what happened to bank loans? Bank loans actually declined, declined, you know, from 8 trillion to 7 trillion. So that tells you again, you know, this is basically not working. 
you know similarly take take india as well you know you see the india india too you know both during the global financial crisis and during the covid crisis the the crr was cut that basically increased the reserves in the system firstly reserves basically are not a constraint because there's huge excess reserves in the system but you know an increase during the global financial crisis from for instance from 1.2 lakh crores to about 8 lakh crores you know almost a a a, a, a seven times increase had no impact on bank lending it actually remained at about 5 5.1% you know uh, earlier and 6.7% later and if you would recall you know the then finance minister pranam mukherjee actually kept lamenting oh we've cut crr banks are basically are sitting on reserves and yet they are not lending and people also use this notion of lazy banking what we point out is that whether it is about you know this sort of ringing you know finance minister ringing uh, his fingers um, about banks not lending sitting on reserves or the concept of lazy banking is based on an incomplete or incorrect notion that stems from the financial uh, theory of financial intermediation and the flawed monetary theory thereby we as journalists also believe under that uh, now things are much clearer okay now there is another complaint which i often hear today in the market Oh my god loans are rising uh, but deposits are not growing as fast as loans now what you are saying is that's nonsense it's not a problem at all <laughs> yeah uh, well you know i wouldn't use uh, that that word uh, okay. i would just say that you know i think conceptually we have to think about these correctly uh, so let me again point out here as i you know as we discussed earlier it is actually loans that create deposits right so let's understand this um you know the 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 base of uh, loans in the indian system is about 120 lakh crore suppose there is a 5% increase in lending that translates into 6 lakh crore a 6 lakh crore increase in loans should be an identical increase of 6 lakh crores in in the deposits right that is what we actually loans create deposits now the base of deposits though is 170 lakh crore so an increase of 6 lakh crore on a base of 170 translates into only 3.5%. So just the mechanical the fact that the base is much higher for deposits you know clearly illustrates to you actually that you know we're barking at the wrong tree because a 6% in or a 5% increase in loans actually translates into just a 3.5% increase in deposits. And you know more more importantly from a conceptual perspective as we've shown clearly is that it is you know it is loans that create deposits. this thought that deposits constrain loans is based on the theory of financial intermediation which basically treats banks as just passing the parcel okay a final a final question since we are running out of time you know what is the advice then to central banks you know when central banks find the economy has to be revived all that they can do is to pump in more you know money supply liquidity so as to goad the banks sooner or later to lend because money is cheap what other options do they have at all they have to do this right so um i think that's a very good question um so as we've just met, you know uh, discussed banks are by far the most important entities for money creation in the economy and whenever i you know talk about banking i use the simile of an accelerator and a brake you know the accelerator is basically the credit growth and you know credit risk management is is the brake um now banks have to basically tune their accelerator and the brake very well um uh, one of the key points that comes across in you know uh, in what can the what can the central bank do central bank as the banking sector regulator can actually you know work both on banking sector regulation and supervision of the banking sector so banking supervision and banking regulation to make sure that the incentives are so that banks are basically tuning their accelerator and the break very well especially i will point out you know banking supervision for instance if you look at the global financial crisis or even the crisis that we had here in india and you would recall in the 2020 21 economic survey you know i had written a chapter that was basically on regulatory forbearance where we had pointed out that you know soft supervision was was something that actually needed to be improved so overall you know one of the key messages for the central bank is to basically really focus on their role as banking sector regulators to make sure that money creation in the economy happens well a specific suggestion that i would actually mention you know in the especially in the indian context is if you take the the you know the, the the capital requirements and we know you know banks basically lever right you know for every you know uh, uh, um 100 rupees that they lend they actually keep about 9 9 rupees you know as equity capital now basel requirements actually you know uh, are 
for all countries only 8%. Um, now, 8, when it's basically 8, the uh, multiplier is about 12 and a half. When you know, it is 9, it is 11.1. And you can see clearly, therefore, by you know, in enhancing the quality of banking supervision, uh, which is why the, you know, the cushion of 1% has been created, what you know, central banks actually can do is to release you know, and, and enhance the leverage, thereby enhance money creation in the economy, and thereby foster growth as well. I think you know, uh, the attempts that are made to actually either increase the monetary base or alter the money, money, you know, money multiplier, thereby the money supply in the economy, I think we've pointed out you know, those are basically things that are coming from flawed monetary theory and therefore are not working in practice. Thank you very much, Dr. Krishnamurti. That was uh, an extremely enlightening half-hour lecture on uh, monetary policy and uh, has c corrected a lot of misconceptions that we have. And, it, and I hope this half-hour tempts you into reading what is a very important book that will change our thinking of monetary policy, Money, a Zero-Sum Game. Thank you very much, Dr. Krishnamurti, and all the very best with this book. Thank you very much, Tata.